quite literally perfect titties. 10 out of 10 titties. 10 out of 10 titties. Um, as a woman who has perfect titties, Marissa. Yes, I will speak to this. As Marissa a, personally, is a, <laughs> as a woman with perfect tits. Yes, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not making a joke. I want you guys to understand Marissa is a com- part, is like president of the community of perfect titties. Your tits are great too. Thank you don't, so much, friend. Don't undersell your tits. I'm going to say my tits are like a slightly cockeyed person. <laughs> They start at different places. <laughs> they look in different directions, but they, <laughs> but they mean what? Hi. Hey guys! <laughs> look at us! Welcome back to the channel! Ooh. Ooh, it is I'm Yata Lebele, and as usual, her usual, the most beautiful, radiant, like just Look at her. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Marissa Rivera. Hello. <laughs> Looking gorgeous. Um, if you guys right back at ya. Thank you so much, friends. If you hear any noise, it is a fan because it is a million degrees. It is so hot. We're over at my place. We do not have central AC. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is, it is. We're feeling it. We're feeling it. So we have mimosas. Under these lights. Under these lights, okay. Oh. So we have mimosas. To cool us off. To cool us off. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers to the second half of the season. Guys. Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Do you guys have a beverage? Or yeah. do you guys have like get, get weed, one. something? Uh, so uh, 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 uh. we are back after like two weeks off yeah. to talk about episodes five through eight. We're going to do episode five right now. Mm -hmm. um, Marissa and I actually did the Netflix early event, the To Doom yeah. event, where we got to see it early on, was it Wednesday? Mm-hmm. And I will include some clips of us like fangirling out on the couch as we watch that episode. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my Is God. this happening? <gasps> yeah. But also we had to watch two hours of press before that. Oh my. God, which was fun, but also not what I was prepared for. They did not tell us that. So, okay, before we get started, as usual, we're gonna, we have our shots ready to go. Today I went with clear liquor because just to, I don't know, just it's a hot day. It yeah, it's a hot day. Just we're just like, mm. So we're gonna take these shots. We're gonna watch Marissa. <laughs> take the shot. Yeah, suffer through this. Cheers. Uh -huh. You know what? That's more than you usually do. <coughs> I'm proud. I'm proud. Like, uh, I don't know if y'all can see that, but she did like two thirds of that shot. Uh, That's beautiful. Uh, uh, <laughs> the burps happen every time. Every time. We have a new setup. Mm -hmm. So God willing, universe willing, prayers up to the fates that what we have is going to work. And hopefully you guys are actually able to see our faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not just like a teeny tiny screen in the corner. Hopefully the sound works. I tried everything out earlier. Y'all, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So. It is what it is. You get what you get. This is free. This is free. But thank you guys for not complaining about the sound. I didn't see people being violent about it. Yeah, and I really you. appreciate that. I appreciate you. That you. was good for her mental health. I was. She was freaking out the day before. I had a complete mental breakdown. Yeah. I was so upset about the sound that I was like, I should just give it all up. Yeah. <laughs> the channel's I, over. The channel's what am I even doing? I'm not coming back. So <laughs> Can you imagine leaving everyone hanging halfway through the season? I actually considered it. I'm glad you uh, worked through that and I, found a way to progress past your perfectionist tendencies. Yes. So Marissa does Try Guys and she does a lot of challenges on, the, on, on their channel. Which is like, I don't know if you guys can see, but like my hands are dyed red right now. Um, that's because I just came from filming something over there. So. Literally from set. So don't worry about that. I'm <laughs> fine. I'm not bleeding. But you can see how good Marissa is under pressure. Like you can literally go from here. Here. There's gonna be a lot of screaming, but I'm gonna say Marissa's gonna win that motherfucking challenge. Like, at the end of the day, okay? In my mind, I won. Okay, she's gonna come through. If I was ever involved in any sort of challenge, it would be like halfway through, Miata left. Like, they, I'd be like, I'm gonna go to the restroom, and then they would just see me driving away. Pressure is just never, I can't do it. All right, guys, 
Bye bye, and I will see you on the other side. Let's get into it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we we are now recording. We are now recording. Okay. We just troubleshooted some sound issues so that that echoing stuff doesn't happen again. We think we got it. Miata stressed out. I am. She gonna take another shot. I am gonna take another <laughs> shot. <laughs> Half a shot with you. Oh, thank you. The little bee. They picked up right from where we left right off. Right where we left off. Like, I was actually surprised. I was like, oh, we'll be in the house. We'll right, 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 right. No. I kind of love that we're having the this The finger moment. blasting just happened. <laughs> he didn't wash his hands. He hugged his whole family. I can't believe it. I cannot believe he announces it like. Oh my god! And the fact that it's like it's we are engaged. This is crazy. Wait, to, hey mom, sisters, like, yeah. let me set the stage for this. The edit, all the also like the slow mo edit of it all just made it. So it's so funny. It's so funny. Like, it's a really, but I do feel like, again, we talk a lot this season about how if things feel, even if things feel silly to us, they feel very Penelope. They feel very Colin. Right. Colin has, I guess he would walk into a room and just say, we did it. We did it. <laughs> like, we're engaged now. I love how this is Hyacinth's sleeping gown. Like, this is her little sleeping mask. She was literally sleeping in silk, like a full silk and she like woke up to welcome them back from the ball. I, I can't wait for them. The kids, the younger kids are just so excited. They're so excited. To to be able to to do all of this. Yes. Like, I feel like Eloise is begrudgingly. Eloise is done. She hates She's so this. over this shit. She hates this. Daphne, it's like, this is what's expected. And yeah. And the guys are, maybe Colin may have been excited, but no one I has know. shown yeah. excitement. To like about society. Yeah. I feel like Hyacinth actually can't wait to she join. She cannot wait. Oh my god. Delighted for you both. Thank you, Lady Bridget. <laughs> and now she gets the mom that she wants. She has the mom that she wants. Lady Bridgerton is the mom we all deserve. We all want Lady Bridgerton as our mom. She meddles a lot. She's just trying to get you married, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> but marry for love. That's the thing about her. She's not gonna let you marry somebody. Just because. It, just because. It's going to be a love match versus yeah. someone like Cressida's mama. We'll talk about it. You cannot marry him. Does he know? Bitch. Yeah. Yes, she can. <laughs> okay. So, listen, I'm not going to lie, though. If somebody that I'm beefing with. <laughs> <laughs> somebody that I'm beefing with is like, I'm marrying your brother in two weeks. I would also be like. Yeah. That's true. I would throw down. I would throw down. I would throw <laughs> down. Because all of a sudden, I'm questioning how long, because Eloise is going to say, how long have you liked him? Yeah. Did you use me to get to him? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have so many questions, but also, I'm going to fight with you because you <laughs> partially ruined my life last season. Right. Now you're lying to my brother. Mm. I, uh, mm. Mm. and again, like, Penelope is Lady Whistledown. It's always just going to be a matter of time before anyone finds out that she's Lady Whistledown. Mm -hmm. I saw someone on Twitter say, if the rich had just asked the poor who Lady Whistledown was, they would have found out so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> if you deigned to talk to the If y'all would just talk yeah. to the publishers. Uh huh. So like this was going to come out. So from Eloise's point of view, it's like, you might bring my brother down, my family down. We need to have a, have you had this conversation? Right. So I understand why she's mad. That was nice of him not to listen in on their convo. That's so funny. I, I would have been at that door. The door was open, first of all. I would have been at that doorway. Doo -doo. I'm so sorry, what? What's going on? You would have found out she was Lady Whistledown. Oh, like, yeah. The second. The I would have found out she was Lady Whistledown five episodes ago. <laughs> Okay. Start of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the season. Last season. Last season. Yes. I would have found out. I would have had an ear to the door and I would have found the fuck out. I'm not going to lie. I've said this a lot. Colin Bridgerton on the show, a kind man, not a smart man. We're going to get into some of the stuff he does with Cressida in future episodes and how he... <laughs> He's a kind man. He's not a smart one. Penelope is the brains of this operation. So he didn't even 100%. think... 100%. So he didn't even think to listen. Mm -mm. He's just over there just so happy. He's just well, so happy. It's kind to not listen, I guess. It is kind, but but 
but <laughs> also this tree blowing in the wind there's a storm a brewing shout out to my friend dwight who does the effects for this show <laughs> you, shout out dwight swat, shout out i think you did you do the tree Del, let us know <laughs> dwight comment down below please i'm gonna text him and ask if he did the tree text I'm him gonna, right now I, Oh, I'm gonna text him right now. Okay. <laughs> this message. She's gonna love this. <laughs> Dwight! Dwight, yo, what's up? My <laughs> name is Marissa. You don't know me. Dwight, this is Miata and Marissa, and we're slightly tipsy. Hi. And we're doing Bridgerton reviews, and we wanna know who does the 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 CGI for the Bridgerton, the, the tree blowing in the wind at the start of the episode. Yeah. Did you do that? Did you do that? Or did like somebody else, like like a guy named Jeff? Like, did he do that? Let us know if you or Jeff did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This, okay, I'm gonna actually pause it on the wig so we can all talk about the wig. <laughs> okay. This wig. This is worse than, I don't know who hates her. This is worse <laughs> than any wig they've had on the show. Lady Danbury's wig is better than this wig. I have a friend that doesn't know anything about wigs who texted me to be like, this is a terrible fucking wig. I know she's supposed to be, you know, all bed less disheveled mm -hmm. and whatnot, but. It's a bad wig. So my friend Dwight definitely is in charge of what's happening. Dwight! Dwight, we're back. We are talking. <laughs> Dwight. Dwight, it's episode five. And we're talking, yeah, that tree blowing in the blowing wind. Blowing in the stormy wind. Stormy wind. We enjoy it. It we, happens again in another episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we love We love the, the stormy, stormy tree. The stormy tree. The stormy tree is good. Well, as we go through, we'll talk more and more and more about Lady Tilly. Cause I had ideas about where this was going. I love that name. Hey, what's what's Tilly short for? Tillamina. <laughs> Tillamina? We use our minds to read. There may not be enough wits left for the baby. <laughs> they give her. <laughs> this is one of those things where the writers figured out how she can deliver something. Yeah. And give her all Just, of the punchlines. Oh yeah. Just keep giving it to them. Please. Keep giving it to them, like. I think they really figured out that she, the way she says things in particular is so perfect and so, like her timing is so her fantastic. Her timing and delivery, that can't be taught. That can't actually be. Either got it or you don't. That's actually very true. Yeah. So like. She it, got it. It feels like they figured out who these people were by this season and then wrote to everyone's strengths. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. that only happens after being on a show for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Has instead led to the two of them finding each other. I I love that Penelope has a moment where she gets to listen to her family, hear her triumph. Yeah. And have to be like. <laughs> <laughs> and looking great. Once she figured out her so. colors, like these sea foams. Love, love the sea foams. She's looking phenomenal. Sea foam blue, sea foam green. It's, oh, <laughs> it's literally just those two yeah, colors. Yeah. And she's never looked sea better. Foam, a little purple. A little purple. A little purple, purple a little periwinkle. Yes, yes. Ooh. But now that she knows her colors, Delish. She looks amazing. It's so <clears throat> interesting that she she wanted Lady Whistledown to say something oh, about her. Yeah. That she loves having this back and forth with she her. She loves the repartee. She does. And the fact that she doesn't is what actually makes her more upset. The fact yeah. that there's nothing in there about her. How dare you not mention the How queen? How dare you not mention the queen? Mm -hmm. She loves this back and forth. I wish there was a way and had some time to talk about like how she became this woman. Like again, after watching Queen Charlotte, how the queen became this woman, a woman who, and again, we know like her husband's very sick. Her children don't really like her. So I feel like but she was, she was not, she was a neglectful mother. This from, is all she has. This is all she has. And she's being excluded. Yes. And that, she does not like being excluded. No, she can't talk to her husband. Although you can tell she's like, I'm not excluded. And then she's like, wait a second. And she figures something out. out. Before we fully get into Kate and Anthony, guys, I'm just going to admit, sometimes you have to admit when you're wrong. I thought they were just going to sprinkle them on like parsley. Mm -hmm. They've actually done more than just sprinkle them on like parsley. They've actually given them depth and some character and this story. season and story. Yeah. There are people online mad about resolution to this season about these two characters, but I think you guys don't understand how actor schedules work, and we'll talk about that once we get to more of that. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about how actors' lives work and how contracts work, mm -hmm. but I'm actually quite grateful for what we got. 
And I'm very glad that the show recognized as we get through the end of the season, like all of the rest of the season, that the show recognized that they could do more with these characters and give us more. And I think they're correcting what they did. Because Daphne and Simon are... (laughs) Daphne is an unwed mother. (laughs) Like... Mention her. They didn't mention Daphne Not once. Someone, someone on Twitter said that they are just pretending Daphne's on bed rest. <laughs> That's why she can't move yep. or be anywhere, and they're in their country estate, and she's on bed rest mm-hmm. because they don't even mention Daphne. In my mind, they're in their country estate. That's for exactly whatever reason. Yes, for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. this is really lovely. I think they've done a, a good job of trying to incorporate these two yep. this season. Yeah. I hope you are thinking pure thoughts. Never. Considering we are returning. Husband is the filthiest man in the tongue. He's never thinking fear thoughts. You know what I also want to say? I mentioned this. I went back and watched some of my season two review. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned this because past Miata used to do research. And <laughs> <laughs> current Miata. Current Miata's tired, okay? <laughs> past Miata did her research, and past Miata mentioned that the first time Cunnilingus happens in the books is with Philip. Oh. Uh, Anthony never did this, never went down on his woman in the books. So I just want to say, they have Anthony diving. Diving. As as Marissa said, muff. Muff diving. <laughs> muff diving. A perfect 10 muff <laughs> dive. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually fantastic that they were, that they introduced this. That this is Anthony's thing. This is actually Anthony's thing. Yeah. Uh, my Sorry. husband also Sorry said like Colin's thing is finger banging and Anthony's thing. I'd love to it's know what Bridgerton yeah, 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 yeah. thing is a thing, but like he really is like a vagina man. Yeah. He really, really is. And what a great actor, because as we know, Jonathan Bailey is gay and he I've never seen him I've never seen a man adore women on screen like this in my life. Lavishing wise. Loves that woman. <laughs> Getting when this happened, I turned to Marissa and said, "The first Bridgerton baby," and she said, "Me and Daphne." <laughs> I forgot that about Daphne. Daphne's it's, had two or three children at this point. <laughs> I keep forgetting about Daphne. Yeah. They want us to forget about Daphne, though. Oh, they do. So that's on them. Like a child. <laughs> That's sweet. I love that he's the most excited about the kid. He's so excited. And I just want to say one real quick thing is that in the books, the reason why Anthony does not really want to have children or get married is he thinks he's going to die at the same age his dad dies. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a really big thing for him to like continue to accept that he's going to live. He's going to have children. He's going to like be able to like have this beautiful life with Kate. This is huge for him. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm happy for both of them. (laughs) Benedict running in. Benedict running in. Cravat askewed. Askew from his morning rendezvous. Rendezvous. And you know he smells like alcohol and pussy. That's right. That man smells like he's been having sex for the past 48 hours. That's right. (laughs) Brother, you must tell them. You delay so I shall. (laughs) Colin is engaged to Penelope. Zero patience. No patience. They are setting... They're setting her character up so well. I so thought. well. She has zero patience. No. Zero patience. I actually am really now excited about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited about Hyacinth's season. It, it's going to be so fun. I would not have gone on and on if I had known plight. That's a damn lie because Cressida keeps coming back to Eloise with her plight, and Eloise is just consistently mad about her own shit. Mm-hmm. So her being like, I would not have gone on and on, Eloise. Are you lying? You lying, because I watched you all season. You lying, girl. You never helped this woman even once. Not once. Not once. It's like quite a life. And Eloise is supportive. <laughs> I mean, sad for her, but yeah. supportive of the reality. I mean, what do you even say if your friend comes to what you What do you even say? If your friend tells you, like, the worst news possible. Yeah. You're like, who? <laughs> I don't know what I would say to a friend who told well, me her parents. Yeah, also, like, it's one of those, like, do you want me to listen? Yes. Or do you want me to give solve advice? Solve the problem. Do you want me to help solve the problem? Or yes. do you want me to listen? Yes. And I feel like Eloise here knows that she cannot solve this That's problem. actually so funny because she... <laughs> She's like, I can't solve this, so and, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna listen. I'm gonna listen. with you. Yes, you're very you right. Because Eloise unload. normally likes to solve a problem, and yeah. there's nothing to be done here. No. So you're just like, 
Well. Well. I like that she thought the man was dying. Can you imagine if your friend's like, I'm going to get married to a man. And you're like, but I thought that man died. Yeah, I thought he was dead or close to it. I saw him last month. He can't make it another day. I don't know. I thought about it. And I was like, I think if she poisoned him on the wedding night. No, I wouldn't know. I think it would be okay. He's so close to death. You can't I can't do it on the wedding night because then like. Oh, oh yeah. Consummate it. Yeah, you gotta give it a oh, week. Oh, fuck. You have to give it at least a if week. If you're gonna poison your husband, yeah. you gotta give it like a week or two. Perhaps I have always felt something. I me. like this. I like this because as someone my, with my current partner, it was very gradual. Yeah, where it's it, not just like a boom. It was not a boom. Yeah. I had a boom moment with my ex-husband and we all know what happened with that. Ex. Um, I had something that creeped up on me. That's actually really wonderful. Me. You guys met on set? Yes. And then it was, was it like friends first? Friends. Friends to lovers. We have a guys, friends to lovers. It's like this season. Yeah. I um, liked Alex and he didn't know I liked him so he ignored me. <laughs> friends. Oh, so much like this. He actually kind of, yeah. yeah I, actually I, very I, much so. Kind of so. He thought I was. Oh my God, are we Penelope? <laughs> Is this, is this why we love this season so much? Are we we're, Penelope? I think we're a little bit of Penelope and a little bit of Eloise. I think both of us together oh, yeah. are very much like both of them. And they both think they know everything. Very self-righteous. Very self-righteous. Very snarky. Very snarky. Think they know everything. Feminist. Feminist. And also, we like. do you like to write? Because I enjoy writing. I love writing. So like, I, like, I like writing down my feelings way more than saying them. I think I actually end up saying my feelings more than I end up writing them down. I think I'm Eloise in that way. If where I'm you just gonna... have gotten a letter from me, you have fucked up. Like, really? Oh, yeah. If you have wronged me. Do you really point, write a letter? Oh, yes. Oh, so you straight up are Penelope. I will not speak to you again, but I'll write you a letter. That is. If you even get a letter, if you get a letter. Oh, that's Penelope, Penelope. Mm -hmm. You are straight up Lady Whistledown. <laughs> You are actually Lady Whistledown, and I'm. I think I might. Wait, be what is what is whistle down in Spanish? Pito bajo. <laughs> I am mujer pito bajo. <laughs> Señora pito bajo. Señora pito bajo. I love it for us. I love it. Yeah, I'm definitely Eloise. I like that the two most annoying people. <laughs> On the show, who I'm constantly like, y'all need to get y'all shit to fuck together. But we're also like Francesca in that we don't want to leave our house. That's true. And like sometimes I'm true. like, don't fucking talk to me. Don't talk to me. I don't, don't want to be too loud. Don't be too loud. People in a, exhaust me. In a social event? Ugh. <laughs> you better find me a husband and get me the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Take me far, far away. Do not want a social event. No. But tell her. Anthony has learned a thing or two. He's like, speak your feelings. You actually have to talk to women. You have to talk What to I've learned from being married is that you talk to women. You talk to women. It's really, 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 <laughs> really easy. Really just almost intuitive. Um, <laughs> I love that Anthony thinks he's so smart for having oh, yeah, figured yeah, this yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When last season, he ruined a life. <laughs> he, and his, he and Kate ruined Edwina's life. But I'm glad they both now know, like, speak. Has he told you that he loves you? Not in those exact words. No, but his body did. Those fingers did. Those fingers sure did say something. Okay. He was probably he in there, like, that. doing <laughs> L-O-V. <laughs> 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 Writing it on. <laughs> he was cursing me. <laughs> okay. I love you. <laughs> this is just a random talk with her mom. This, I feel like it must be coming from, like, jealousy or something. Because I don't. Understand? I quite I actually don't understand this talk because she is getting together with the most eligible the, bachelor of the season, like but also it. like and also a Bridgerton, the most yeah. secure family of the town. I don't I don't know why her like, mom's why so upset. Why is she mad? Except for, I would be upset if my daughter did not tell me. Right. I'd be like, I should not have had to find out with everyone like, else since when. Right. And how? And how? And why am I finding out through this? Through this. But at the same time, her being like, why not Lord Debling? Lord Devlin was going to take me the fuck away. Also, you saw how he ran out of the ball. You literally saw Colin Bridgerton interrupt a dance, which right. is 
not done. Not done. Not done. Not done. No. The only reason she's doing okay today is because Colin proposed last night. Yeah. Otherwise, she'd be in a lot of trouble with society. She'd be ruined. She'd actually be ruined. So I, I'm very confused about... Why her, is she so upset? Why is she so upset? Why isn't she like, oh, thank God. Thank God. It would make more sense writing-wise if she had been like, thank God he decided to take pity upon you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that would have made more sense. I feel... We'll talk about it as we go through the season. There's there's a lot of moments where I'm I don't I feel like us as an audience, I feel like the lighter the writers have led us in one direction based on characters' actions or what we've seen in the past, mm-hmm. and then they would just go in a completely different direction yeah. and there were things I didn't quite understand. And this scene in particular, I think her mom has every right to be mad, but not for the reasons I think the audience understands. Right. Over your own standing, you might see that Penelope is the most eligible amongst you. Easily. The only <laughs> The only Featherington. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. No. Although I'm not gonna lie, I am a Portia stan. She's an awful person, but uh, but Holly is it Polly Hunter? Polly. Polly. Polly is very hot, and hot the the woman is just so gorgeous. She's so hot, and I I don't know. She's a spell over me. Also, Colin coming to her rescue, and this is the first time she's hearing. He proposed out of love. Mm-hmm. This is the first time she's hearing that. So this is kind of the first time that Penelope is being told that she's lovable. That she's lovable. Has anyone in her family ever told her that she's no? Because lo- I love you. Pen. Pen. Are you sure? Do you think she's ever heard it before? Like the words "I love you" from a man? From from even from her mom. When was the last? Do you think we her- haven't seen it? How often do you think she's been told, I, I love you? I don't think we've seen it. I don't think we've seen it, and I don't think she's heard it. Maybe Eloise has been like, I love you, friend. Right. But she hasn't had that in a while. No, this is very, like... It's very telling that her first reaction is, are you sure? That's terrible. Not, I love you, too. <laughs> her life. Her life. And you should see it as well. Freak. Oh, I just got chills. A freak. I'm looking glass. Other parts I've been... I've been dreaming about. Titties! Titties! We've all been dreaming about them titties. We've all I'm not going to lie. I've them. been texting you about wanting to see the titties. Uh, yeah. We've all been we've dreaming. Been, we've all been dreaming about the titties. I just want to also note that she turns back to the mirror first, so she wants she to wants see them. To, like she wants to, like she wants to see and be seen. Yes, and she wants to see him seeing her, like all of it. Very hot. Penelope's kind of Very a freak, hot. like a low key freak. She is a freak right away, and I'm happy for her. Perfect titties. Quite literally, perfect titties. Ten out of ten titties. Ten out of ten titties. Um, as a woman who has perfect titties, Marissa. Yes, I will speak to this. As Marissa a, personally, is a, <laughs> as a woman with perfect tits. Yes, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not making a joke. I want you guys to understand Marissa is a com- part, is like president of the community of perfect titties. As a person who has been blessed enough to understand what what I've seen with my own two, ni- my own two eyes, how would we let me speak to this let i'm gonna let yes i'm gonna let you speak to this also your tits are great too thank you so much friend don't undersell your tits i'm gonna say my tits are like a slightly cockeyed person (laughs) (laughs) they start at different places (laughs) they look in different directions but they (laughs) but they mean (laughs) They're a little googly eyed, but they'll make you go googly eyed. I just wish they started in the same place. Oh <laughs> my all God. the different time zones. <laughs> that whoever interviewed her, or whoever asked her that question yeah. about her body, and she answered about the perfect breast the way she knew. Yeah, as a, it was the quote, as a woman with. Perfect breast, right? Um, my body type. 
A woman with perfect breasts. Yes. <laughs> Just a perfect quote. I'm so happy for her. She looks stunning. Stunning. And again, I do love to see like a soft, also a soft belly on TV. Mm-hmm. And a large breasts and a soft belly on TV, it doesn't happen very often. Never. We see We see small breasts usually and we see a very defined ab. It's kind of nice to just see like a, a, a regular woman's a regular body. body being worshipped and just and we can see how beautiful it is mm-hmm. like it's stunning to see George. this vest why this vest though that's my only gripe with the scene this is- i guess i guess because okay this is my theory on the vest the vest the last time we saw the vest was when penelope Colin- wouldn't run away from the <laughs> <laughs> yes and when yes. Colin was being strong Right. Oh yes. And he was very being very emotionally strong and, with and verbally okay. strong with her mother, and he's taking charge here in this moment. That's so interesting. He wear maybe he wears the vest for strength. Like we all had that thing, like a a, co- it's true. a wig, a lipstick color, an article you have of clothing. That article of clothing, that thing that makes you feel cunty. Yes. And that's the vest for Colin. And it's the ugliest. It's Colin's <laughs> cunty vest. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, he feels so, so good in it. He feels so he good. Feels so powerful. <laughs> Yay! And that's she, some good body makeup right there, too. Those defined ass. Shout out, shout out to the makeup department. Look at that little booty! Look at that little booty! Look at that little booty. Oh, it's a good little booty. Guys, look at them. They're so, this is a very, this is so sweet. This is very sweet. Yes. Also, and this you, is the piece of furniture they broke. They, you, yes. yes. So Marissa told me that they broke the settee, right? Yeah. While they were filming this. Yes. I also want to say that Marissa brought this up when we were doing our first view, that this is happening from the female gaze. Yes. So this is all from her point of view. And so it's just lovely to watch a sex scene. I think when nudity is done from the female gaze, it doesn't feel violent. It feels very worshipful and mm. very sweet and romantic versus if um, a different person had filmed this and done this from the male point of view, I don't feel like her nudity feels gross to me. It no. feels beautiful. It feels it feels virginal and innocent, but also womanly. Mm-hmm. Versus sometimes when we watch nudity on screen, it feels violent and it feels yeah. like um, like you. She's totally in control. She's in control. This does not feel exploitative. Mm-mm. There's this sense. No one's out of control in this. In this, I mean, it was there was a little out of control in the carriage. Yes, was little, but there was but still consent. There's still consent. This no one is out of control. No. Steps are being taken. Yes. Consent is being asked yes. for. And I've seen a lot of people recently say that they don't think nudity belongs in TV or film or it's too much and they don't want to see it. I think what's happening is you guys are getting confused about the way things are being filmed. I think when mm. we watch a lot of nudity on screen, I'm going to be honest as a person who's watched a lot of Game of Thrones, sometimes nudity is exploitative. Like nudity can sometimes be deeply exploitation. Exploit- it quite literally is exploitation. The either the woman has no control, especially if you're a newer actor, you don't have a lot of control over your contract. Mm-hmm. And if someone says you're going to do nudity, you do it. It's filmed by male DPs, male showrunners who want it filmed in a certain way. Male so it directors. does male director, so it comes across a certain way. This is being filmed by people who very much understand their audience is female Mm -hmm. and the way that we would want to see nudity on screen. And it does not come across exploitative to me at all. Their story is romantic. And so this and this this losing of the virginity scene is very romantic. It's so romantic. It's so romantic. So. (laughs) I love. How could this get any better? How could this get any better? I do love a little bit of humor also yes. in the middle of this. Well, because sex is funny. Sex is hilarious. Sex is the the sounds. The sounds that body that, that bodies make when a queef. Oh, um, <laughs> or when your bodies just like hit that when you hit when it's perfect, like wet, perfect sweatiness. Yes, and, and, like, and, and, <laughs> and then you get the <laughs> and then also like when your body's fart. Yes, and your body's <laughs> you know, we don't got that in this. We but, but we do home. still have fu- humor. Yes, sex yeah, is yeah. very funny. And I love when it can have moments like this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when she takes him and she's like, let go get she, back here. When she grabbed when him. When she grabbed him just now. I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. A natural. Look at the look she's getting. Do y'all see the look in her eyes? Come on. That is, come on, give me more. Give me more, daddy. This is crazy that she's looking at <laughs> 
she had sex for the first time one second ago and she's already and in she's, control. Yeah, she's like, I like this. I like this. Liking this. Let's, let's do it. Let's more. do it. She got the O. She, she got, got the, the o. o. O on the first time? O on the first time. Which oh, is, on the first time? Which is also a very romance novel thing. <laughs> it's so romance. Romance novels will be like, she came 13 times yeah, that night. And I'm like, the first time. <laughs> he broke her hymen, then made her come 13 times. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, no, but love this for her. I love this for her. It's you know aspirational. What? You know what? If she's the type of woman that can come. I met a woman who had no clitoris. This <laughs> I, there will be a point to this story. She had no clitoris on the outside. However, her clitoris was very pronounced on the inside. And she said once she started coming, she could not stop coming until a man pulled out. She said sometimes she would come for an hour straight and it would... <laughs> so I do want to say that there are people out there who are having moments like this. I do think maybe we're all having different types of organs. <laughs> Listen, every orgasm is a valid orgasm. It's a valid orgasm. And so I'm like, I, maybe romance novel women all have a G spot. <laughs> Listen, when I lost my V card. Yes. As an adult, I think I was 18 or 19. I think you were still younger than I was. I, I didn't lose mine until like my early 20s. Your early 20s. Yeah, I, I was in college with my longtime boyfriend. Yes. Finally lost my V card and I... It did come. You came on the first time? Twice. So, me and Penelope, blah, 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 blah. That's because I knew my body very well at that point and let him know what was up and what I needed. Okay. I was very vocal. Oh, my gosh. I wasn't about, I was not about to not orgasm. I have communicated already. My first time was in someone's car in a church parking lot. <laughs> Mine was in my dorm room. That's, I think the church parking lot has a lot to do with the discomfort of it yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guilt. And, like, <laughs> there was a lot going on. There was, Jesus uh, was in that car. Church there was no kids, room for orgasms. Church kids are some of the nastiest kids. And we know where all the spots are where you can fuck and not be caught. And one of them is the church parking lot on a Sunday after eight. And let me just tell you, it... Damn was not great it was with a person i did not care about it was the first and last time we had actually never even kissed before that moment Girl. i i had decided you just wanted to get it over with yes yeah, so i for a long time i come from a christian background same i was saving it for marriage and then I, I was trying to <laughs> and then i was like that's not gonna happen so i'm gonna wait until i'm in love and i did and then i got a uti before I had ever had sex, I had a UTI, so I was on medication, and during Thanksgiving, I couldn't, like, drink or anything, and I was on medication, and so, like, my parents and my aunts and uncles were like, oh, because she's going crazy during Are you college and having serious? sex, and I'm like, well, everyone, all the adults think I'm having sex. Oh, so y'all did that. So y'all did that. Y'all did that. Y'all did that. I had a, so, so I'm like everyone thinks I'm having sex anyway. So I'm gonna do it. So fuck it. No, I was um fuck I, me. Fuck really? me. <laughs> and she got fucked and had two orgasms. <laughs> thanks to y'all. I had I wanted to save it for marriage, and then I was like, wait, Miata, you don't ever want to have kids. And my game plan at a young age was I wanted to be an opera singer, uh -huh. and my plan was to have a boyfriend in every major European metro metropolitan <laughs> metropolitan area area mm -hmm. and i would have different several, holes and different area codes quite literally ludicrous was literally my muse yeah, yeah, yeah and i wanted to have a boyfriend in every major city and not ever be tied down and never get married and i went so if you're never going to get married right how are you going to have sex yeah <laughs> i was like what are you going to one plus one one plus one is not equally two not here. equally two if you never want to get married you want to have sex with every man in europe how are you possibly going to save this for marriage so then and you that's air to four quite literally like a week lot. <laughs> like the next week i was like i gotta get this shit after it happened i ran over to my neighbor's dorm room and <laughs> just announced it i was like i just had sex twice and then like skedaddled out of the room <laughs> Oh, Penelope, yeah. now's a good time you to have tell him. You nothing to compare it to, though. Now's a really good time to be like, I'm Lady Whistledown. Yeah. What? Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what now I mean? Like, when he's in, in the When haze. he's in that haze. Because he even says that at some point, if you had just told me at some point, yeah. I was so happy. Now's the right time. Like, just whisper it in his ear while he's sleeping and be like, baby, I told you. 
I'm Lady Pito Bajo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pito Bajo. Oh, I must plan the best betrothal party ever thrown. I get it. She's like, she's like very, what's the word? Reticent? 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 Reticent. Mm -hmm. That word. Reticent. Reticent. Uh, she's very reticent um, about telling the news. She's like, it's not the right time. Yeah. And like, what is it? I get it. Like, I, I do too. I've never myself had to uh, announce announce a pregnancy. Yes. But I feel like I would probably wait until I was I, showing. I think so too. Yeah. Like, just like, and no one will know <laughs> until <laughs> the baby's just. And about also. To be Kate is not from a big family like the Bridgertons. I'm not saying she's like Francesca, That's but true. this is a lot. Like, as soon as you announce it, everyone's going to be in your business. Baby, 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 baby. Yes. And like, you lo we love Hyacinth, but Hyacinth, Hyacinth is going to be like, oh my God, I'm going to be an auntie. Everyone's yeah. going to be all up on you. So like, give us a few more. Give us a minute. Isn't she the one that's like, let's, instead of being here, let's go to this, let's go to the country. We don't need to be here right now. She's but, the one who's like, let's just be a couple for let's just be a, a couple. while longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, again, we talked about this, this outfit. I adore this. Uh, I also love the carriage outfit when we first see them. This, I like this more though. Yeah, I just. Bridgerton blue. Bridgerton blue. And with the sorry with influence. With the sorry influence. I, what Maybe I, another half shot. Half shot. What I really like about their relationship is she doesn't talk ever when she's around her family and around him, she can't shut up. Yeah, she's very open with him. She's very open she with him. She feels safe with him. Yes. There's, obviously, obviously very safe with him. There's this thing that- And he, he feels yeah, safe with her. He feels so safe. And he loves listening to her too. I yes. think he loves listening to her talk. There's this thing now on, in, or on Twitter where people that like to talk a, a lot are called yappers. And oh. like a, a person that likes to yap, like people are always like, I like to do a lot of yapping. And I love that she feels like a yapper around him. Yeah, and around, only around him. And only around him. Around her own family, she's just like. They've always been honest with each other. Yeah. There's a scene in. So in season two? In season two, yes. where Kate's making tea out on the porch okay. on the veranda and and Eloise comes out and she's like, can I speak frankly with you basically? And they have a very frank conversation. And so that was the start of their relationship yeah. and has continued to this, which I really- They're very frank people. I, I really say, like that yeah. they chose Kate to have this conversation yeah. with her. Because also like, there's something to be said about the in-laws, the yeah. people who are in the family, but not like- In, in the family, yes. Not your siblings yes, yes. who you could talk to about yes. shit. It's like how you can talk to your aunts and uncles about your parents. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can have a phone call and be like, my mom's driving me nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is that. This is that. This is very much that. I love that. And and Kate also gets it. She yes. understands. She's an independent she was an independent lady before she met Anthony. So yeah. like she understands what Eloise she is going it. through. Our solicitor poking into Jack Featherington. Our favorite solicitor. The only solicitor. The only solicitor, <laughs> our favorite solicitor. I really when we see him again in episode eight, I was like, I kinda miss you. Yeah. <laughs> Have you done a love scene as an actor yet? Mm -hmm. It is not on camera uh, in a play. In a play, it Live. is awkward, guys. It is a little. There's a, there's a little bit of awkwardness to it. I think it's kind of nice that she's playing with. I was in a room. I had to do a nude sex scene for a television show, mm -hmm. and we had a closed Look at set. It. Like we had a closed set, but there was 15 people on the set. That's too many people. The, that was an unnecessary amount of people. It made me feel so self-conscious. But this, I, th it's just lovely that she feels comfortable enough to do something. This, like, playing with your co-star's chest hair, mm -hmm. that is very, like, intimate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it speaks to, like, how they are... It speaks to the intimacy, I think the coordination. Intimacy, yes. It speaks to I their think also friendship. Their, their friendship as actors. I mean, at this point, they've been filming for 7,000 years. Yes. So yes. a little chess play it's is just, to be expected. <laughs> just to be expected. But I, I love this because we can see how comfortable they are together as actors. I get very comfortable very quickly. To me, it's like shaking hands. Really? Yeah. I was slightly uncomfortable because the guy didn't have to undress as much as I had to undress and also Tyler Perry was our director. So Tyler Perry has seen my taint. And that was very <laughs> <laughs> So it was and my ass and my boot. He's seen every part of my body. And so it was just it's And a you little, know what? You're welcome, Tyler Perry. You know what? <laughs> But quite 
literally Tyler Perry. You're welcome. Was, Tyler Perry was like thrust more. Like I've had Tyler Perry like have someone. Did tell you? Someone. Did you have a, uh, an intimacy coordinator? I had the two best intimacy coordinators. <gasps> I have intimacy coordinators. If you guys don't know what that is, lately in Hollywood, we have things called intimacy coordinators, and they literally come on set whenever there's nude scenes, sex mm-hmm. scenes, to actually choreograph the scene. And somewhat, they, somewhat, 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 somewhat. Yeah. At least there's, there's a, it could be a little loose. It could be loose depending on the actor and what they want. There's yeah. someone there facilitating the communication. Yes. My intimacy coordinators, I was like, hey guys, I would actually like to get a little airbrushed on my tummy. I have like, I have stretch marks. Would, uh, is that possible? And then, but, oh honey, of course they went with me so that I wouldn't be naked alone in the room with the makeup artist mm-hmm. just to make sure I was okay. I could not put on my, um, what is it called? Merkin? I had to put on a Merkin, which is what is it's, it's, it's literally it's like a wig for your pussy. It's a wig for your pussy. In my case, it was a bald wig for the bald pussy. And they, I couldn't put it on. It wouldn't stick. To- <laughs> your pussy it was like, your pussy was, was like, I'm I was, or nothing. I mean, I was so sweaty because I was so nervous. I'm nervous so that, so that it wouldn't stick. And they, I was like, I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm having a problem with like sticking it on. And this lady went, honey, she grabbed some gloves. She went, no problem. <laughs> she put gloves on. She went, spread them. And so I spread my cheeks. She got eye level with my ass while it was literally my anus. <laughs> I'm not. She put it on for me. They were the cu- two kindest women. They actually helped us figure out. I was like, guys, I have really bad knees, so certain positions are not going to work for me. And they went, oh, okay. So if he picks you up, mm-hmm. and then if we do doggy style, we'll make sure your knees are on a chair already, so you're not having to stand up and take any. Wow. They figured out everything to and make sure. That's what an intimacy coordinator is. Th- that's there for. They were the most wonderful people. So like, that's what they're there for, and it's wonderful to have them on set. Yeah. You know what? I know this is weird to say. I really enjoy his belly button. Interesting. That's a good belly button. It is a good belly button. You know what? Sometimes you just like what you like. And you know what? I was like, check out that belly button. (laughs) Looking like a pimp. I text Marissa to be like, Lady Danbury dresses like a pimp. Yeah, it's the cane and the the hat. The cane and the hat. She is truly like... The what is it? The nineteenth century pimp. That's right. Yeah. Imagine Again, she should have done a compliment sandwich. Your abs look great. I'm Lady Whistledown. That penis. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta just sneak it in there. You gave me the time of my life. Yes. I'm Lady Whistledown. Yes. That pin though. <laughs> that pin though. <laughs> just gotta sneak it just in. Just a couple of suggestions. Like we, um, and we're throwing this out. We're a little tipsy. We're just throwing things out there. But as I Lady mean, Whistledown, she could have come up with any number any of things. Any number of things. She's a creative person. Yes. She knows how to list things. List things. <laughs> She can be complimentary. Yes, she could have figured this one she out. She could have figured it out. Yeah. Nothing. When a woman tells you nothing, nothing, we're lying. We're absolutely lying. It is always something, especially if she's looking at you like this. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, baby, it's something. And it's something huge. Something. <laughs> it's we are delighted by your intentions towards our daughter, Lord Greer. This is you, so awful. Body. We shall be pillars. First of all, it looks like she's in hell. It looks. This all is the so, fire. Yes. Behind her with yes. the red. This she's framing. She's literally in hell. I certainly According to who? I don't believe in music. Music, but I feel like he and I agree on that ballet in episode four. (laughs) (laughs) I can't imagine having to do this. No. This is not. This is why I... I'm in Cressida's corner on this one. I would do literally... Literally anything. Anything to get out of this. And I think... We'll have a conversation about how the season ends. Mm-hmm. Um, because I do think from this point on, I'm very much like, I need Cressida to be okay. Mm-hmm. Because she's in an abusive household, and then they want to send her to another abusive household. Mm-hmm. And so we'll talk, a l- we'll talk once we yeah. get there about how her story is mm-hmm. resolved. 
This storyline. We're back. Uh, welcome. Miss Hyacinth. This this look between their child and Hyacinth. Crush. He has a crush immediately. And I've mentioned this to Marissa already and some other people, but my husband has been from the beginning, like, the only reason he thinks the Mondriches are in the show is that one of their children is going to marry a Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. So when this moment happened, he went, okay. Okay. But Marissa mentioned he's very young. He's like very he young. seems he's like so 12 much well. Yeah, he here. seems so much younger if, than high school. Yeah. 10? Yeah. So I'm like I can't like between the ages of 7 and and 13, I'm a little hazy. It's hard it's hard for us to tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like unless they find another actor to do this, it it doesn't work with who the current actress is who's playing high Yeah. yeah. And you know well, what? Must tell you. This is showing that Colin can be forgiving. I think he's a very forgiving person. Because yeah. even when he... With learned, Marina? With Marina. With Marina, yeah. he was willing to be forgiving. He forgives Penelope at the end of the season. I don't think he knows how to hold a grudge. Mm -hmm. His wife can be vindictive enough for the both of them. Two. So, and all she had to do to get him to marry her was... Be herself. She is we mentioned this in a past review, but like literally, that's what you need to do. Yeah, that's all you have to do. I if mean, you're like, find yourself for first. Like, yes, find yourself first. Like yourself, work yes. on yourself, and then be yourself. Yeah, and if you have to change who you are for another person, baby, it's not going to work. No, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Because they're going to experience. You can't. It doesn't work out. And I invited him. <laughs> We know where Francesca gets her giggle from. It was, there's so many moments over the next four episodes where you can see the way Violet acts when she likes a man is very similar to the way Francesca acts mm -hmm. when she likes someone. How they both kind of like stutter over words. Mm -hmm. And she can like speak to him about she, anything. Yes. She like spills the beans with him. I, so I'm like leaning forward. I'm petting Jojo. We're petting Jojo. It is the cutest thing in the world watching Violet, who normally is just very like has everything together, and she likes the man, and she's just like, oh, um, she's like unraveling. I'm thinking of ways to circumvent his proposal. Would he help me? Of course. Just excuse me. I uh, and we never ever hear which way she was thinking of to circumvent him. Yeah. So Eloise walks away and. Cressida has no one else. No. And also her hair is extra crazy. They have to just at this point that like in the Cowper household, they probably just have hair pieces at this point, right? That they just plop on her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no one's hair can do this and not be tangled. You'd have to cut it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel bad for her because Eloise from this point on. Is so uninterested. She never, I'm not sure she ever, plight. never once tries to help her. Mm. I do like how she sets him up to succeed. Yes. And then when he doesn't, yes. she's like, baby, I got you. I Let's got get you. some alcohol. She never once leaves him alone, leaves no. him out to hang. She's like, okay, this didn't quite work. And I think they went back and she was probably like, okay, baby, you got this. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, she let's, let's rehearse, let's rehearse. This story. Yes. Yeah, 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 she yeah. likes him so much. And it's just wonderful to see her not be like, there's no cringe, right? She's no. just like, no, I like this man and he messed up. Okay, let's go back, figure it out. Now we're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, and it's very cute that he didn't have too much pride to come back with the same story. Yeah. They're both, I think, just not understanding that most people in society would be like, I'm never going to show my face again. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm going to get my story right. Right. And she's like, great. Great. <laughs> no hug. She held out her arms. No. <laughs> but I was like, talk of life, of course. Express all to your good health. <laughs> save, it, crazy. save it, save it. Crazy. That's a crazy. Crazy. Unhinged. Unhinged. It's unhinged speech. If I heard that at like an engagement party where someone was like, here's till you die. Till you die. Tick tock, motherfucker. <laughs> what? It's conveyed to my first by the company of family. Did you get My any of these? Of I got the um, eardrum product. one, conundrum. I love, I love how intense Anthony is. To 
Eloise like many a young person is a little self-involved and her friend is going through a major crisis yeah her friend is like hey in a few weeks i'm going to be married to a man who's going to rape me in marriage but i don't want to do this to be fair yeah she cannot share the her current crisis no and also to be fair she did not invite cressida to this party correct <laughs> So Cressida can, is fucking crashing this party, making it all about herself. She is. She is. Which is very her. Cressida. So we're basically just seeing young people all be a little bit selfish right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Sometimes I miss what is right in front of me. I miss Francesca. Uh, I saw straight away. What a dumb story. <laughs> For such a sweet sentiment. I hate this story. But it's the way she looks at him as if it's the best thing she's ever heard in her life. And to her, it is the best and thing she's ever heard. And to her, it is. He must have told her that earlier today. Like, I may, let me tell you this story. And he had a whole analogy and metaphor. Like, you should tell the family. You should tell the family. That's yeah. so sweet. That's the most romantic thing. She is... Look how encouraging she is. Look at that little face. She loves this story. Loves the story because she loves this man. Yes. And it's very sweet for her, for him to say, I saw her immediately. Yes. Like, I'm fucking oblivious, but not about her. Okay? Not about her. Uh, Freedom to do whatever she wants. Not to mention the money. <laughs> Cressida's so Miss Percolating. Uh, and also, Cressida is so young that she thinks 5,000 pounds will set her up for life. For and life. She's not very what smart. Are, what she's what never is the handled, conversion rate? Right. She's never handled finances. I want to know. So what year are we? Let's say about 18, 14, 18, 15. Okay. Oh, someone has 1813 here. People are looking People this are shit looking up. People are looking this shit up. People are like, how much money <laughs> does that make? <laughs> think? It would be $98,000. About $100,000. $100,000? Oh, baby, I'm Miss Whistle. I'm Lady Whistle Down. $100,000. $100,000 will get you a year in LA. <laughs> in LA. But in 1813 in Vienna, she could have lived off of that for like a few years. I think the yeah. issue is she's not thinking about the fact that like she doesn't know how to handle money, right? Because someone's always taking care of it, whether it's her mother or her father. Mm -hmm. She would go, she would blow through her money and end up destitute. Especially the amount of people who would take advantage of her. And she's not very smart. We see her try to write. You go to Vienna. You don't know how to speak another language, girl. No, she doesn't. Come on. I didn't. Learning at this moment that he thinks what happened is that she didn't like him anymore is right. <laughs> it's really heartbreaking. It is, and he's like, "I won't hold you to it." If Can you he... imagine having sex with a woman you love and she immediately comes? <laughs> Never mind. I'm, I would rather be ruined than marry you. Right. That's crazy. And that's crazy that he thinks that. He's, I know. So, like, you know, there's a lot of talk about her being insecure and, like, finding mm -hmm. herself in her confidence. Like, he's just as insecure he's as just she insecure. is. He's just as insecure. And the last time a woman said she wanted to get married to him, she was using him. Yes. So this is, he, I don't think he believes in himself or that women want to be with him. This mm -hmm. is really, the only time a woman has really been with him is, does he pay them for sex? Like, a lot of the women he goes to are at brothels. Yes. You know, so this is the first time he's really, really we, we been don't with know, a woman. We don't know the ins and outs of his, like, European, of his European trip. He could have been States. with some widows. Right, 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 right. So, but this would be... He could, he could have been a lady tillying it up all across Europe. Like, who knows? But I feel like a lady tilly goes after a Benedict. A, a person that she looks at him and goes, you know what you're doing. I need a man who knows what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know. That's something to be said about teaching a man what to do. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Like, <laughs> We'll get to the end of the episode and talk about this faint. I love also that she fainted just like... She fainted with her lips <laughs> She fainted! She fainted! How did she fainted? Breasts up. Breast. Lips Be hurt. Breast. <laughs> you can't see it. Breasts. Let me do, let me see. Can I move? move let me move, move this. this. Let me move, move this. this. Move, move this. This. this is this is Penelope. <laughs> Chin, arms out, lips, lips. <laughs> Filler. I love all scenes. 
season. All season, Nicola's lips have been like this. And she looks fantastic. I'm gonna say, like, I felt like this was an excellent episode. I loved this episode. I loved this episode. Um, I mean, I did laugh at the end. I was like, what the fuck? But also, like, this this show has really funny moments. It does. And it, I just feel it's based on a romance novel. Romance novels have deeply dramatic, overly dramatic things. And silly moments. Well, you know what? I'm going to just move this all the way up. Yeah, I love that. Um, just silly moments. And when you see them on screen, you're like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That silly. That's overly dramatic. But I love it. Yeah. I do love However, a, a, a time is a ticking. Yes. Moment. Yes. Or, you know, you, you, store, story. I'm, I'm a setup. get to you. Yeah. Like, I, I like that. I like that there's some urgency here. Yes. I like that. And she deserves like, to have the pressure on her. Like, mm -hmm. she needs to fucking tell the man she's about to get with that, like, hey, before. At the beginning of the season, I did trash you in Lady Whistledown. Right. Like, I'm so sorry. That hurt his feelings. I like that he was like, it's not a big deal. Like, he remembers it word for word. Yeah, he does. So, like, he deserves to know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I like that Eloisa putting the pressure on. Eloisa being a little bit of a baby, but. I'm but a, she's protecting her brother. She's protecting her brother. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just thought it was a very fun episode. When we were watching it together, the whole time, I was just like, it was thing after thing. It yeah. never stopped. And that's what I want out of yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like this. Especially, like, after after the carrot scene, it just goes. It goes. It goes. There's never a moment. I felt like yeah. after we watched it the first time, I was like, I feel like I just had whiplash yes it, it was like it was a big thing after big thing after big yes. thing was happening yes it never ever let up and i love that i kind of wish the show consistently stayed at a high speed at a clip at a clip because the show does have a tendency to linger <laughs> yes <laughs> and this episode never let up and then no. once we get to episode six seven and eight there are moments where i found myself being like Sure miss that ticking clock. <laughs> she that you know what? Having that, you're right. Having that ticking clock from starting from the middle of the episode when Eloise says you you have this much time, mm -hmm. it just keeps the pace going. Yeah. And so yeah, it it, it, it this this show because we have so many storylines, you would think they would keep it at a clip, and sometimes they dwell, and you're like, baby, you have seven other people you could we could see sometimes right now. I like a dwell though. I think I'm okay with the dwell if it is a dwell on like I like. I really like Lady Violet. I really, you know, the Penelope Colin. I think the when thing. the dwell that's the thing about the audience. The audience is gonna like different. That's very true. Storylines. That's so, true. Like, depending on who they dwell on in that moment, that, people are gonna connect yes. to it differently. So that's very true. Yeah, yeah. There's just certain people, Montrachus, that I'm just like. <laughs> that sometimes, um, and not just her. Sometimes it's the queen. I don't feel like I don't feel like there's much. More Mondrich for the yeah. I think I think they start dwelling more on like the queen finding Penelope, which yeah. we'll get into once we get there. But yeah. thank you guys for spending probably what's going to be like an hour fifteen. I'm gonna I'll, I'll see how close I get once I'm editing. Edit um, the shit out of this girl. I'm gonna edit the shit. Out. All right, friends. We will see you on episode six review. We're excited. Bye. Ta ta. Bye.